Hello everyone and welcome to this, this week's episode of We Are Not Entertained. I'm Tommy Haley. I'm kind of doing this early. I'm recording this on a Friday. Only reason why is because I am working most of the weekend. So I'm working Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Usually I record on Sundays and then it'll be out on Mondays. But since I have to work and I work overnights, I won't have time to record on the weekend, like on Saturday or Sunday or Monday. So I am just going to do this on a Friday. So it's a good thing I'm doing this on a Friday. Or it's a good thing. It's weird doing it on a Friday, but there's something I need to talk about. Remember how a couple weeks ago or a month, I don't know how long it's been since the Vince McMahon thing, you know, with him doing the hush money settlement, oh, excuse me, a little gassy, with a little hush money settlement that he paid off so many years ago, and everyone was thinking, oh, that's probably it, couldn't get any worse, could it, oh, oh, it got, oh, it got worse, it got so much worse. So, as of this recording, as as of Friday, uh, as of actually 9.30 in the morning, as of this Friday, the Wall Street Journal put another thing out on the Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, this is from the Wall Street Journal. They agreed to pay more than 12, he agreed, so... Wall Street Journal is claiming that Vince McMahon paid $12 million in hush money to at least four other women over the last 16 years. So that's five. He's almost, he's almost used, he's almost paid $20, 000, $20 million in hush money settlements for, and I guess the acclaim thing talking about the NDA makes so much sense now. But seriously though, like, it, like, how could this have gotten possibly worse? Of course this gets worse. Sixteen million dollars or twelve million dollars in hush money to at least four other women. Other than the first that's not the first one that was talked about many months like I think a couple of months ago or something like that. I don't remember. It's been a while since that's happened. But another twelve million dollars in hush money settlements. So in Sean Ross Sapp, being the fightful person that he is for WWE, was asking, was going around, let me pull it up, so, it says, among these include a huge payment to a former talent that claims Vince McMahon coerced her into having oral sex, then demoted, demo, demoted her and didn't renew her deal when she rejected further advances. Another involve, involves alleged unsolicited uh, nudes from Vince McMahon to a talent. So there was also another thing that came out today was is apparently there was supposed to be doing a documentary on Netflix about Vince McMahon. I don't think it was about Vince McMahon. I think. I don't remember what it was. But from Denise Salcedo, um, she had sources tell her that the Netflix, the Vince McMahon Netflix documentary has been pulled and is off the program spreadsheet at Netflix. A source at Netflix confirmed it no, lo- it is no longer being listed on the uh, on their spreadsheet. Another source at Netflix said that shit's out of here, so they're not doing this anymore. Now that four other people have come out, or now that Wall Street Journal has found or is alleging that they have found four more people that have gotten paid the combined $12 million in hush money. It continues and says, Another source indicated that the project was already deep in post-production and that several talent interviews had been done. Done months ago and that millions were spent. I spoke... This is from... This is Denise Salcedo's verse, not mine. And she said, quote, I spoke to one of the producers on the project, however. They declined to confirm nor deny this story to me. Hmm. This is very interesting. Of course... And here I thought, man, I'm really not going to have anything for Wayne this week to talk about. Here's this. this, this just thinking it couldn't get worse for Vince McMahon. It does. I get that Stephanie McMahon is the acting uh, CEO of the company right now. But he... Vince just has to go, period, now. He has... He cannot be the CEO anymore. He has to be gone from, like, all day-to-day stuff. Business, creative, day to day, all of it. Like, look, I get that this is his child, 
I mean, this, I mean, his dad started all this many, 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 many years ago, and then he just enhanced it to where they are the most popular thing in the world at a time, like during the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. But you got, but it's it's time, time to, it's time to let go. It's time to get to get him out. Now, was he very important during the Attitude Era in the 90s? Yes, absolutely. It's not even close. You, you have to give him I, I can't defend him. You got to give credit where credit's due, but you can't defend something like this. You just, you just can't. Especially in a world we live in now, nowadays. You can't defend something like this at all. At, at all. You just can't. You cannot do that. And if you do defend someone that does shit like this, fuck you. You are the lowest piece of scum in the world. And you do not need the platform to say that. Just get out if you support, if you're defending Vincent Man. This is unacceptable on all facets. <sighs> what, else? What, else? What, else? what else has there been to talk about? I mean, this, I, just, just, I just find it so crazy that, you know, it's funny. When it first came out with the first person that, that the Wall Street Journal was alleging had a hush money puzzlement, I'm like, surely this can't get worse. Q to today, as of this recording, it's like, oh, observe, I can make it way worse. And it is. It is way worse than I thought it was going to be. But another thing, so we're going to keep it on track for WWE. And here, my, I, you've know, people know my stance on the Sasha Naomi thing. And we've had, we had news the other day on Thursday about Sasha and Naomi. Is from Sean Ross Sapp saying, PW Insider has reported that Sasha Banks and Naomi were removed from WWE's internal roster. This is, PW Insider is a good source. They're sometimes reliable. They will never post any fake stuff. There was stuff, I think a couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago, or something like that. I don't know, it was like a handful of months. It was like two, I would like to say two months ago, maybe. That it was reported that Sasha Banks requested her release, which was then, you know, shut down by Fightful, Sean Ross, and all, Sean Ross Sapp, and all that. And that was shut down. So that wasn't true. Now, this is in, I mean, I don't know what this means, but it's just, it. to be fair, I don't think they are, Sasha and Naomi are going to be wrestling for WWE anymore. Now, does that mean they're going to go over to AEW and request a release? Are they going to request a release, go to AEW and all that? No. They've already all they both made millions and millions of dollars for their company and all that kind of stuff. So, it's not like it's not like they're just going to go to a different company. They can retire if they want to. Cuz I mean, they're literally very po- I can't do words right now. Cannot do words very good right now, Tom. But, I mean, it's just interesting to see that they have removed their names from the internal roster. And they pre- pretty much just, you know, if certain talent that is on the roster right now, they're like, if you have a match that talks about Sasha and Naomi, do not mention their names. Case in point, Bianca Belair was doing an interview. I don't remember where. And she had to, like, stop and stutter herself because she wanted to say Sasha. Like, she wanted to thank Sasha for the main event, but she couldn't because, you know, they're just, you know, uh, redacting all the information over them. And let's be honest here. A lot of what the women's division is now, you have to thank Sasha Banks. She was such an integral piece in the women's revolution in 2016 with that first ever uh, Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania. Can't forget Becky Lynch because she was in there. But like she's very, she was very, she's very integral to what the women's division is now in WWE, and how modernized it is. Now, is it good right now? No, absolutely not. They are desperate for female talent. There, I saw something on Twitter the other day uh, today with a segment with new SmackDown Women's Champion Liv Morgan. Hell yeah, 
Ronda Rousey, Natalia, and Lacey Evans. And Ronda Rousey was fumbling her lines. And it's like, what are we what are we doing here? And then Natalia comes in, Natalia's doing the big show stick where she's like, I don't know, she's either face or heel. And then Lacey Evans comes in. She has all these upbeat uh baby face vignettes, and then she just goes back to heel and it's like, you all can go to hell. It's like, what what are we doing? What are we doing here? <laughs> like what what are we doing here to the point where it's like, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna make her a baby face with all these vignettes, and then we're gonna see her on SmackDown this on friday and be like yeah you all can go to hell i'm i'm evil now i'm a i'm a heel now you all can suck it and it's like make up your damn mind but now there's another match announced for SummerSlam. uh the other matches that have been announced is obviously for the five millionth 260 60th thousandth 196th time is roman reigns versus brock lesnar although this time i believe it's in the last man standing match so I can't wait for Roman to win that. And then we have, I believe, Pat McAfee going up against uh, bum-ass Baron Corbin. I get he's from Kansas City, but I love Pat McAfee. So that's going to be an interesting match. It's very interesting because of their size, I guess. I mean, Pat. Ma- I, let's hope Pat McAfee can follow up a great showing at WrestleMania with another great showing at SummerSlam. Hopefully. Hopefully. Now, and then the newest match that has been announced for SummerSlam is Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam. Take note, there's no stipulation in this match. There's nothing, there's nothing at all. There's no stipulations. Just a one fall pin or submission by either one for the win. I'm worried. <laughs> Now, notice Charlotte Flair has not been on TV for a while. Now, knowing WWE, they have a Flair complex, let's put it this way. I, I call it a Flair complex because I get, because I've, I've stated it. I've stated many times my disdain for WWE overly using Charlotte Flair sometimes and keeping the belt too, keeping certain titles on Charlotte Flair for too long when at a certain point the time was right and they have her win and then the next two weeks they just make her drop it clean which is just stupid but either way I digress I feel like WWE is setting up to rain on everyone's parade with Liv Morgan and have Charlotte Flair come in as a third or somehow, some way, Charlotte Flair is going to be in this match. I just know it. It's SummerSlam. It's the biggest party of the year. It's in Nissan Stadium. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. It's in a giant football stadium. So, more than likely, Charlotte Flair is going to get added to this match. I just... Do I do I hate myself for saying that? Yes. Do I know it's going to happen? Absolutely. I absolutely know it's going to happen. But hey... That's just WWE. Oh, also, another thing is is that um, I guess the Usos and the Street Profits obviously are going to have a match at SummerSlam for the Undisputed titles. But there's going to be a special guest referee. Now, did they say who it was? No, because they probably don't have a clue who it's going to be. Watch it be like Sami Zayn or something like that. That would be some funny shit. That would be hilarious. Um, let's see. Another thing is, is that, you know, Austin Theory showed up on SmackDown and interrupted Roman and Paul. You know what? Actually, you know what would be an interesting thing for the Paul, for Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar? I get that he managed both of them, but wouldn't it be something if he turns on Roman? Well, I mean, if he turns on Roman for real this time? Because when he went back to Brock, he was kind of acting as an imposter. We saw it at St. Louis, because case in point, he turned on Brock in St. Louis at the Rumble, when we were there, by the way. And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens after the match. Here's what I think might happen. Here's fantasy land for me. So... 
Here's what's actually going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen first. What's going to happen is Roman Reigns is going to win this match, and we won't see him for a plethora of time. We won't see him until the uh, the pay-per-view in uh, Newcastle. Or card. I don't remember where it's at. It's Clash. Of the, uh, we won't see him until Clash of the Castle. We will not see him until Clash of the Castle if he wins. That's what's going to happen. Here's what I want. Here's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Here's what I fant- going to fantasy book about. So Roman will win. He's going to be very tired, exhausted, like any other champion would be when they get cashed in. They're beaten. They're they're fake. They're injured. I put injured with air quotes because they always fake it in. They always sometimes they sometimes don't fake an injury, but sometimes it's like, oh yeah, this he he can't stand because it was like I mean it's like come on. Here's what's going to So Roman's going to be tired. We're going to hear Austin Theory come in. He's going to cash in. He's going to cash in, and while the referee is looking away, Paul Heyman is going to turn on Roman and the bloodline and cost Roman the undisputed titles. And then Austin Theory will win. That's what I kind of want to happen. I mean... I'm not really booking, booking this. I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, Austin Theory could, you know, cash in on Roman and Paul Heyman could do an ECW, uh, do an ECW one night, uh, stand, uh, one night stand and basically count the, uh, do the three count for Austin Theory while he's pinning Roman and, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's that. That would be pretty cool, I guess. I don't know. I feel like they're just they're giving again, like I said last week, they're giving Austin Theory the Roman Reigns. They they're making Austin Theory the next Roman Reigns, by the way. And it's like, here's the guy. He's gonna cash in soon. He's gonna cash in at SummerSlam, more than likely. He's gonna cash in at SummerSlam. So get prepared for him to hold the belts, whether you like it or not. Is do I now do I like Austin Theory? Yes, he's a very good wrestler. He was very great and evolved in his time in NXT. Are they, I don't know how, but I don't know how to feel about him on the main roster. He's okay on the main roster. So there's always that. But hey, who knows? They probably will have him unsuccessfully cash in the money in the bank briefcase and have him lose it to Roman because they're keeping both titles, even though they should only have the universal title on Roman Reigns, uh, airtight. That's just my opinion. I don't know. All right, let's go to Ring of Honor now. I'm I'm kind of kind of tired out talking about WWE now. Let's we'll start with Ring of Honor week seven. Now, I believe we're on week eight, if I'm not mistaken. It says week seven, but the one before that was. Uh, The one before that says week seven. So this is technically week eight. It's just mistyped to say week seven. So this is week eight. So we have a, a recap of last week's reveal, which was Jeff Jarrett, which is the commi- Jeff Jarrett's the commissioner of Ring of Honor. How the fuck did I not see that? Brock, <laughs> Brock even told, basically straight up told me to my face when we were on the way to Omaha and said he wrestled in Memphis. And I always forget that Jeff, like, and I, and I should have known. I'm like, it's fucking Double J. But either way, we have a recap of, you know, Jeff Jarrett being revealed as commissioner. Show intro, show crowd. We cut to Kevin Kelly and Matt Stryker in the arena as they welcome us into Ring of Honor in Philly. Um, match one, we have Silas Young going against Keen Cross. Young, who has a massive sh- who has a massive shear on his face, stares down Cross and then unloads on him with a clothesline. Young continues the pressure until Cross is out on, out on his feet. Silas hits the stock lock. It's a bridging full Nelson in a three-minute match for the win. Zane, we cut to Brian Zane with FTR, who come out still in pain at, from what happened at Bound by Honor. Zane asks how they are feeling. Dex says, well, I'm not going to lie. Lie to you, Brian. We're not doing good at all. Cash has three cracked ribs, and I have a dislocated shoulder. We are in a lot of pain. It's going to take some time for us to heal up. 
But when we do, know this. Briscoes, don't think, you for- don't think we forgot about you. Because one way or another, boys, the boys will be back. And it may not be tomorrow or next week. But we'll be back. And we will- when we do it, it'll be, it'll be when you least suspect it. Like the way, like the way you did when you bushwhacked us at Bound by Honor. Say your say your prayers and count the days because FTR is, when FTR is back, you'll wish it was, it was fire and brimstone for you instead of what you've got in store for you. I said that very well. Match two, we have Chelsea Green. I okay, Brock. All right, I get there's no Cardona. All right, I know. All right, I get it. He's injured. You don't have to remind me every goddamn time. Versus Shiloh Martin. Green gets control early and punishes Sh- uh, Sh- Shiloh? Is that how you say it? Green does nothing but torture Shiloh for the whole match. R- mercifully, Green puts Shiloh out of her misery with an unprettier for the win in the five-minute match. We then go backstage with Tesla Blanchard watching the monitor, where Brian Zane asks what her plans are here in Ring of Honor. Tully, without skipping a beat, starts to say something, but Tessa says, Dad, he has me, not you. Tully looks slightly hurt by the comment, but nods and says it continues. What are my plans here? Well, it's quite that simple. Most people have forgotten who I am. I am not just some second-generation wrestler. I'm not some locker room cancer. I am the very best professional wrestler in the industry. And if I make some people who live in their grandparents' basements upset, so be it. Because I'm prof- I am professional wrestling. I am the best wrestler in this company or or another one I walk into. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an important phone call coming. A promo by David Finley coming to ROH where he says, my father loved to fight fight. Me, however, I love to make people be in pain. Okay. Something different. Don't worry about it. Cut this part out. Either way, we are back to match three. We have the Workhorsemen against Brandon Cabello and Reno Renegade. Brock and JD quickly destroy Cabello and don't let him tag out. Spike pile drive for the men. After the match, JD grabs Reno and locks the figure four in as Brock hits elbow drops from the top. Griff Garrison comes rushing out to make the save. He is quickly beaten down as Arn has joined the, in the in the assault. Please do not pull the Glock out and blow his brains all over the ring. Thank God. Actually, oh, he doesn't. All right, cool. Cabello tries to help, but it gets obliterated by a massive shoulder tackle by Drake. Pillman Jr. comes out with a steel chair and chases the workhorseman off. Zane is joined. We then go backstage with Brian Zane, who is joined by the kingdom. Before Zane says a word, Taven says, Brian, you know what I think? I think last week went about as well as anyone could have thought. We beat a legendary tag team in America's Most Wanted. And most importantly, we retained our ROH Tag Team Championships. So we're going to do this again. So we're going to do this again. Anyone in the back who wants a shot to come at the kingdom, you best not miss. Otherwise, you're like every other team that will bow to the kingdom. Kingdom head of the ring, Wolf House Hurl, the American Wolves. Oh, God, who are the American Wolves again? Let me look this up. The the, the man's wolves. Oh, it's Davy and oh, it's Davy and Eddie. I forgot. The fans lose it, match four. The Kingdom versus the American Wolves. The fans lose their minds as Davy and Eddie return to ROH. Unfortunately, the Kingdom take control, and besides some small glimpses, the, ne- the newly reunited Wolves have no are no match for the ROH for the best ROH has to offer. Thy Kingdom come. The Thy Kingdom come for the one, two, three. Tevin and Bennett smirk and hold on the title above their body. Of Eddie Edwards in an 11 minute match for the win. Dak Draper with his mass attackers is seen looking very nervously. Zane walks in and Dak says, Oh, for the love of God. God damn it. What do you want? Zane says, Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts about tonight's main event. Draper says, My thoughts? My thoughts? What do you want me to say that I'm scared and I'm crapping my pants? Because those would be falsehoods, Brian. No. What my thoughts are. That maybe our commissioner was right about one thing. Maybe he was 
right about one thing when he said we are dishonorable. It's kind of like this. I kind of like the sound of that. We're not deck. We're not Dak Draper and his mass attackers. We are collect. We collectively are dishonored, and you better get used to it. Maybe we'll have another trick up our sleeves tonight as well. What are you still doing here, Zane? Get the hell out of here! Draper kicks Brian in the ass to end the interview. Match five. We have Allie versus Joyce Wilder. Allie is back to being normal. Allie. She does not wear the black attire. She's not the bunny. What is what is what Brock is trying to say? However, showing that she is not the wide-eyed wrestler she was, she goes back and forth with Wild Wilder until Allie catches her slipping and takes control from there. Allie hits the cherry bomb or the cherry popper. Yes, that's wait. That's an actual name. In parentheses, yes, that's the actual. Really. That's the. That's hmm, totally not sus at all. Not sus at all. Not not totally sexually sexualized in any other way. Totally not. Totally not. Uh, it's a wheelbarrow face buster, or as Brock sometimes calls it, the fuck buster. <laughs> I forget he calls it that. For the win in a seven minute match. Zane still backstage finds Serena Deep, who is packing her gear into her bag. Zane asks. What she thinks about the new talent here in ROH. Deep says, you know what, Zane? I don't care who comes in because no one can ever touch me right now. I'm on a level so above any other woman in this in this division. I see no god where I'm at except me. Deep leaves. Main event time. Dak Draper with the rest of the Dishonor. The rest of Dishonor versus Jay Lethal in the House of Truth in a Lumberjack match for the ROH TV Championship. Draper and Lethal start off with a test of strength. They lock up with, with the big... With the big man, Draper easily wins and tosses Lethal back. Lethal and Draper then trade holes, and it ends with Lethal getting the best of the exchange, finally slapping Draper in the head off an amateur wrestling takedown. They trade momentum back and forth until Draper launches Lethal outside to the rest of the Dishonored, who gladly beat him down until Gresham and Tankman come over. Lethal gets in and dodges a big boot from Draper, who goes over the top rope and on the floor in front of Gresham and Tankman, who gladly beat, beat on him for a second until Dishonored makes a save both lethal and draper to continue to struggle to maintain control of the other after a missed diving elbow drop from lethal the biggest ma- the biggest mass man glooms him man glooms on with him holding a sock with something in it this sparks the brawl on the outside when it makes all the members fight in different areas of the arena just as Draper goes outside of the ring to grab a chair, we hear that familiar note from a guitar, and out comes Jeff Jarrett with a guitar in hand pointing at Draper. Draper sees this and rolls back in the ring. Lethal catches Draper with the lethal injection and goes to the cover. No members of Dishonor are around the ring, only Jeff Jarrett. One, two, and Draper actually kicks out. Jarrett looks pissed as he waves back at Waves to the back as members of the RH roster come down to ringside to act as more lumberjacks. The match continues as each time a man gets tossed out of the ring instead of the lumberjacks being on them they let the man get up to his feet they're acting more as a barrier for the house of truth or dishonored to get involved in the match this rings true when tankman tries to come back to ringside and get mobbed by the roster he tries to fight them off but the sheer number makes him head to the back gresham and dishonored do the same things soon fall apart when draper and lethal tumble to the outside as the Lumberjacks go to pick them up, the workhorsemen and the Varsity Blonde see each other and start brawling. This causes all the Lumberjacks to stop, start fighting. Jarrett watches from the stage as Flip Gordon dives on all the Lumberjacks, taking out all but one Lumberjack out. The Lumberjacks taking all but one Lumberjack out. I just repeated what I just said. The last Lumberjack standing is Dan Housen, who looks around at all the bodies lying on the floor and eats his chips while Jarrett comes down and grabs him and says... I don't know who you are. I don't know how you got this job, but right now, you're my deputy in stopping any outside interference. You got that? <laughs> you know, I get this is fantasy. I get this is like fantasy thing, but I would love to see an interaction between Dan House and, and Jeff Jarrett. Like, actually, like I want to see that. Dan House looks at him and instead of agreeing, agreeing runs into the ring as both Lethal and Draper. Are down. He goes through the cover on Draper. The ref, not being an idiot, pulls Dan Housen off, and Dan Housen says, I want to be the champion of television. Jarrett, Jarrett brains him with a guitar shot as Dan Housen crumples to the floor. Jarrett, looking at both men who are down, is then hit 
in the nuts by a masked woman. Jarrett falls. Draper sees the opening and has a Draper bomb for the win. He stares at the masked woman the whole time. The rest of Dishonored come down to the ring, including the original masked woman. The new masked woman looks at Dishonored. She smiles. She shakes Draper's hand and she takes off her mask. And ta- she takes her mask off, revealing none other than Serena Deep. She is the newest member of Dishonored. The show ends with the carnage at ringside and in the ring as Dishonored stands tall as they now have the RH TV and ROH Women's Champions as we fade to black as the fans throw trash in the ring. End of credits. You know, kind of surprising that she kind of joined uh, Dishonored. Plus, by the way, it's a great name for a group. Oh, also, I believe... Actual ROH's next pay-per-view, I believe it's called Death by Dishonor, if I'm not mistaken. Death. But of course, the first thing I see when Death by is Death by Snoo Snoo. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. The ROH next pay-per-view. Oh, it's, sorry, it's Death Before Dishonor. And I showed that to Brock, and he's like, well then. And then I, and then I messaged him back. I'm like, that was going to be one of the names of pay-per-view, wasn't it? And he's like, yep. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's a fantastic name, by the way. Just fan, straight-up fantastic name. But either way, this is going to do it for this. Uh, I've got really nothing else to talk about wrestling-wise. I mean, I didn't really watch SmackDown or Rampage on, as of this recording on Friday. Either way, you know... This has been another edition of We Are Entertained. I've been Tommy Haley. You can follow me on social media at dude underscore rex14 on the Twitters. The D and the R are capitalized. You can follow the YouTube channel at bcardyt. We have just released, if I'm not mistaken, we have, as of this uh, releasing, the website is still fresh and brand new where everyone has been posting blogs. And, you know, if you will... I'm gonna be start doing wrestling, you know, start doing wrestling vlogs here sooner or later. I've been working on some. Um, I'll just give you the names now. It's my favorite. It's my top five favorite uh, themes and my top five favorite pay per of all time. And uh, those have uh, those were a lot easier than ranking. These are not as these aren't easier. Actually, I'm, let me let me let me restart that. I'm gonna say this. Writing these two articles it is very difficult because of how time consuming. This is. And I thought me writing this, ranking all the city connecting points that have been released was difficult. No, this isn't a whole other case of difficult. But you can. See, I believe Big Time Talkers are going to be talking about stuff and things. I believe Macy, I think last week or this week, was eating Cheez Its on uh, CSP. Um. Brock and Ben talked about uh, Missouri stuff in Earning Our Stripes. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep now as I get ready for work soon. Or actually, I don't go to work until Saturday. I don't know why I just said that now. Either way, this has been We Are Entertained. I've been Tommy Hilly. Make sure y'all drink some water. Bye.